Hello and welcome to the latest uh, episode of The Tripod with me, Kevin, Matthew Newman and Mark Runke against his will. <laughs> um, so we are carrying on reviewing old TV commercials from the past. Old TV commercials old, from the old past. Old ones do tend to be from yeah. the past. Yeah. Um, and doing a little bit of analysis on them and also... Uh, deciding on whether they'd be allowed to be on TV today mm -hmm. with their resident expert, Matthew Newman. Clearcast expert, at least. Well. well. Oh, he is. He is. He's he very is. good. He's, he's very good. Yeah, he's just shy. Um, okay, so we'll launch straight in. So uh, the first one that we're going to look at is the John Smith's TV commercial, commercials, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with Peter Kay. Um, so I've picked I believe he's quite popular I've heard of him yeah he's done a couple of gigs mm. uh, here and there um, so yeah people might have heard of him very popular comedian um, remembers a lot of things doesn't he <laughs> that you and I might also recall yeah go on do the impression <laughs> yeah so anyway we're going to look at the uh, John Smith's Peter K commercial mm -hmm. There was a series of these. Well, I'm, I'm interested to know why he chose this particular one. You know, if there was, was a the first? decision. Oh, was this the... Okay. Wasn't it? Um, I can't remember which one I picked. Hey, you know what I mean? So good, mate. Right? Hold on here. Hello? Hello? Sarah? Babysitter. Yeah. What's up? Oh, okay, put her on. Hello, Brittany. It's Daddy. You what? She's having nightmares. About the wardrobe monsters. There's, there's no such thing as wardrobe monsters. It's the burglars that are breaking through the window. That's what you want to be worried about. Sweet dreams. <laughs> she's, she's gone. <laughs> Two more lambooners here. No, it, it, it wasn't this one. It was the other one where what? they put the R in the restaurant. Now, I might have... Where's the what? They're, they're, they're in the restaurant yeah. and they're having a discussion. And I'm sure one of them, they're talking about, you know... If you could sleep, the partners would like be allowed to sleep that one somebody was, else. That one was much later on. Oh, was it? Yeah. And yeah. When, they, when his wife's basically saying, which celebrity do you fancy? But he says, like, he's like, like, no, no, I love you. I love you. You know, I don't want anyone else. Just like, no, where? Yeah. Know, just who, who do you fancy? He's like, Claire from work. <laughs> <laughs> no, <he's>, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, <laughs> that particular ad that we've just watched, which is in the, in the Curry House, um, was 2003. The first one was the Avid, the Ball Skills one. Yeah, I thought that was yeah. the first one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, we can kind of just talk about all them, really. They're all in the same series. Yeah, yeah. Um, all the same style, style of comedy. Um, so in terms of analysis of those commercials, why do you think that might have been successful? Well, it's playing back onto the... Well, you've got a big name there. Actually, I'm going to say a big name. Was he at the time? He, he was new on the scene, wasn't he? Peter Kerr. He was, it was, it was massive at that point. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was 99. I think he did his first show on Channel 4, that Peter Kerr thing. And then that, one of those episodes turned into Phoenix Nights. Yeah. And by the time... If this was 2002, did you say? Mm -hmm. So by that point, definitely the first series of Phoenix Nights is on and possibly the second. So he was like... It was imperial fears, Peter K. He was yeah. massive. He couldn't couldn't move without Peter K. <laughs> obviously, I mean, he, ha he didn't say a word there, but uh, his sidekick, Paddy McGuinness, who's obviously, arguably, I mean, uh, you know, just by the fact he's on TV all the time, arguably a bigger star these days, mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. day to day. But uh, uh, it was he was massive. Well, it's all like I suppose relatable situations of a certain age group, you know, um, situations, and just situation comedy and kind of probably saying out loud maybe what a lot of people are thinking <laughs> in those situations as well mm -hmm. um, and certainly the the ball skills one where it's like where he just <laughs> kicks in <laughs> I think job's well done it's like yeah well I mean the, that one which I know we're not looking at now but that one uh, Avid just became a thing that people said do say to this day mm -hmm. in, in the right circumstance when playing five aside or anything it'd just be sort of that one actually became part of the lexicon, I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's, um, 
it was that could almost be a scene out of Phoenix Nights really it was all yeah. his it was all yeah. that style of comedy mm-hmm. um it was out exactly the right time he's a uh, teetotal by the way Peter K was he then yeah Good I nice. believe so I think he's always been teetotal he's talked about it and he stand up for years he's always, always the designated driver Right. But anyway, you know, I'm sure uh, you know, made quite a lot of money out of this. It's probably <laughs> the reason he did it more. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the the comedy itself, just again, it's just like the other commercials we've looked at. They've got a great tagline there, which is no nonsense. He's just writing comedy sketches around that. Mm. Um, and again, it's just enjoyable in between what you're actually Tells watching. Tells you nothing about the product. Don't need to know anything about the product. But it's just, relevant, isn't it? just piles a load of goodwill towards that brand, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a horrible beer. <laughs> <laughs> <In my opinion. laughs> but yeah, very memorable. Uh, like Matthew said, um, a lot of the a lot of the lines out of that are in the cultural zeitgeist in 2023. Mm-hmm. So yeah, doesn't get more memorable than that. Yeah. In terms of a uh, clear cast perspective, I mean, he did these ads. He did the initial batch between 2002 and 2005, returned in 2010, which is when they made the one Mark was referencing before. Mm-hmm. Again, back in the curry house. <coughs> I don't think there's any issue with it at all. It's uh, just a funny little sketch, and that's it. There you go, first one through. Ding! Wow. Brilliant. I mean, it is a beer advert, mm-hmm. so it would be restricting when it could be on, but I don't think there'd be any issue with them passing it. Is there any change in the restrictions on alcohol advertising since... That would be the sort Early of thing that would have been quite handy if I looked it up before this podcast, but I can't remember. <coughs> good. Very good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, I am the expert, as you keep telling me. <laughs> and the next one will be Cadbury's. What year was this from? Confectionery again. Yeah, so this one is, if I say Cadbury Gorilla, will you know which one I'm talking about? Of course. Yes. Okay, let's uh, let's just roll on that then and get analysing. Was there any point when you watched this originally, or you thought that was a real thing? Not that I recall. Particularly because this was after Tim Burton's version of Phantom of the Ridge, which was not a good film, the makeup of it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Good aims. Yeah. Uh, cool. So that commercial's from 2007. The campaign had a budget of 6.2 million pounds. So, by God, did Wall say it quite a few times. Do you know... I'm just going to say a self-indulgent advert there. I remember the school round... The schoolyard (laughs) talking about, like you said earlier on, like, that was how you got your information when you was growing up. Mm -hmm. Had you seen that that advert? Why were you hanging around schoolyards in 2007? Well, no, it probably wasn't <laughs> best. Like rewind, but t- <laughs> it too, was too mean. <laughs> yeah, too mean. Um, oh, have you seen that TV commercial with obviously Phil Collins and the monkey? In? And I was like, no, I, no, I haven't. I've, I've, I'll probably catch it tonight. And I did, and I sat there and I watched it. And I went, what is the fuss about? <laughs> what is the fuss about? And it's a classic, you know. You're I mean, I'm wrong. The mark, I love it. I'm wrong. I love I, it. I mean, you know, minority here. But I was just like, what are you trying to do with that? What's the monkey 
play the gorilla playing the drums for? Is it is it Phil? Is it supposed to be Phil? Is it a, is he bringing out a new album? <laughs> and then it comes up as Cadbury's, and I'm like, ah, nah, I'm, I'm I'm as I'm chuck, tucking into. <laughs> As you're in the bar of galaxy, yeah, yeah. you're like, I'm out, I'm out. There are Maltese, Maltesers. Up goes Gorilla. <laughs> and then on the way to school the next day, which I might might not be going <laughs> to school. In 2007. Must have been going to college. I've got to be mm. going to college. No, I think maybe perhaps you were taking your kids to school in 2007. No, 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 no. Was I? Yeah, work it out. Count backwards. <laughs> Well, maybe I'd stopped off to get him a bar of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyone want any sweeties? That kind of thing, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. It's an interesting one because, yeah, it's a more kind of modern old commercial that we're looking at there. Mm -hmm. um, we were already in business. Mm. So to be honest, Mark, I remember also at the time not particularly enjoying it. I'm getting quite agitated by because it, it, there was a lot of people talking about it and to me the questions you're asking there are a, a huge reason as to why it is memorable the connection between gorilla chocolate there is none <laughs> but people pulling the hair out trying to understand what have i missed here yeah the the tune itself you know come on mm -hmm. anyone would just get caught listening to that, especially oh, yeah. at the end row so the music itself, just a huge part of the success of it, I think, again, so that's a theme throughout all these commercials. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think they just said, everyone knows what this product is. Again, another theme. We don't need to get mm -hmm. caught up in trying to sell the product. Um, let's just do something that gets everyone, gets all those adults that are in the schoolyard to <laughs> get talking about. <laughs> well, no, that's the interesting thing is like, obviously they're using the brand colors We've got that build up of the music and everything, and the, the, the playing on that, and then at the end, you know. But they had to put it at the beginning, they had to put Cadbury's, they had to tell you what you're going to see. Because if not, like nowadays, it's like I've got to sit for a minute and find out what this TV commercial is about. Mm -hmm. Like they'd they had to preempt that, they've put that right at the beginning of the commercial. Like it's a Cadbury's advert yeah. production. I, won I, think I wonder, that. though, whether the people that made the advert would have done that or whether Cadbury's insisted that they did that because my hunch is the people that actually made the advert wouldn't have done that Yeah, no, that's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. yeah. And I don't think you need it. I think it's fantastic. So fantastic. What, what, Deliciously what, fantastic. So what is it that um, works for you about it, Matthew? Um, By the way, can I, sorry, before you answer that. I'll just add, I think part of the reason that I was, you know, it, I, it is a great ad. I think it frustrated us doing what I was doing at the time because there's only certain brands that are able to mm -hmm. advertise in that way. Most brands need to tell you about the product or service that they're offering. So to be, it was more kind of jealousy, I suppose, at, at not being able to kind of have the freedom that that creative agency had there because mm -hmm. you've got to have bottle to advertise your product and never show it. Put a bloke in a gorilla suit and play the drums. If, if the that clients- was a, That was a bloke in a gorilla suit. <laughs> well, we were saying during it, there's no <laughs> point. I don't think they're trying to sell it as a real gorilla mm -hmm. at any point. Mm -hmm. I thought he was just Which highly, again, tra highly just a, trained. Um, so yeah, it's probably just jealousy. But yeah, it's I'm probably honest. going back to like the Apple advert, isn't it, where it has nothing to do with the computer. Yeah, just smashing stuff up and you yeah, know, just imagery. Anyway, sorry, Matthew, under rubbed you there. Well, obviously we're not looking at it today, but I showed Mark. Um, was it Benson and Hedges? Yeah, I can't even remember myself now. Was that oh, the Benson and Hedges? The, the one with the, the lizard. But I, I showed Mark a, a classic cigarette advert from the mid eighties, um, which it, it's got the same issue, if you like. That is that they're trying to deal with as Cadbury's, which is, it's dairy milk chocolate. You you can't. There's no point in spending a minute and a half telling people how delicious dairy milk chocolate is. You can't say it's good for you, so on and so forth. So, the thing you need to do is make people remember dairy milk chocolate. The next time that they're going to buy some chocolate, you you just need to be in their head. 
So the, <clears throat> the cigarette advert I'm talking about, the challenge there was obviously you know, that they couldn't make claims about the cigarette. So the, there was this whole, you know, there's a bunch of different directors making them. This is in the 80s in particular. And they were all like big productions, you know, Oscar winning directors and that kind of thing. And it was just really abstract. So the one I showed Mark ended up with this helicopter comes in and drops this um, massive packet of cigarettes into a swimming pool. And then someone swims up to it, and it's like a can of tuna. They put the key in and the roll back the top, which it then cuts to that on a big billboard, and that was actually part of the print campaign. So it's really, like, out there, but it was just memorable imagery. And I think this one is fantastic because they don't need to tell you about the product. It is purely about giving you something that's entertaining. Now, as you both said... Mm -hmm. You, you've taken it more of like it aggravated you but you still remember it just the mm, same yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what it it's for and obviously when that advert came out we as the audience didn't know this at the time but it was actually the start of certainly I think it was the start of Cadbury's um, moving into this idea of joy like their mm -hmm. product equals joy so like now like when you uh, um, I think we've got bus ads at the minute that talk about little pots of joy like the little little pots and so that was the thing if you remember that advert was followed up by um, the next one was the, uh, had the Queen soundtrack on it and it was a bunch of airport vehicles you know like baggage vehicles and stair cars and all that kind of having a race down the oh, runway that one didn't hit <coughs> quite as well I but think. the point was there were that then started to reveal more of the thinking behind the campaign which was Enjoy. right we're now just going to associate this product with fun we're just going to give you a little moment of just fun mm -hmm. and that's you know as I say that wasn't clear from the first one because it was totally new yeah, yeah. but it's just really memorable and is that is that where the is it the two kids with the eyebrows yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Same, yeah. yeah same yeah, yeah, campaign yeah, yeah. as well uh -huh. Well, yeah, there's a Which, uh, so that's quite a lot of people. Out. So, in part, that's why I think it's so good because, obviously, in in retrospect, I can see the way that kind of that was the building of a campaign. Which, to one extent or another, they're still mm -hmm. running now because this this message about that equates Cadbury's with joy is still there. Fair mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Yes, I think it would still be allowed on TV, but I think it would be again post nine o'clock. But actually, I think that advert. Yes, so you know, kids are going to be interested in a in a gorilla, but I, I, I think it's I think it's arguably more targeted adults than kids anyway. That particular advert. well, the the music as well, it's isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. You know, down with the kids, is it? So I think they could still run it today, albeit after nine o'clock. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. And there's a slight pause there because the next one is a very troublesome commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Soft. For, for a children's drink <laughs> called Kiora. Anyone drink that when you were a kid? I did. Yes. It was, you couldn't not, could you? It was around a lot. Yeah. Ever sing the song that we're about to hear? Not as much as the other commercial that falls into the same bracket. Yeah. Which I probably know, unfortunately, all the words to. This commercial was first launched in uh, 1982, so it's going back quite a way. Um, and between then and 87, it did get slightly tweaked. And a couple of the reasons it was tweaked is because it was deemed racist. So they made some changes to make it slightly less <laughs> racist. Um, yeah. But yeah, let's, let's whack it on, eh? And uh, yeah, yeah. rip it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Kiora! That's too orangey for crows. It's just for me and my dog. I'll be your dog. I'll be your dog. Kiora! Kiora! Well, before we say anything else, <laughs> it was a different time, Mark. It was a different no, time. No. Yeah, different what time. I, what I was going to say was, I think you could start singing the first lyrics of that song to a lot of people and they would be able to continue it. So, like, the, the song is in a lot of people's mm -hmm. heads. Yeah, yeah. Um, 100%. And this, what I asked people 
on my social channels. They're coming up on screen now, by the way. Follow, have a look. There's some good stuff on there. But whilst people on social channels, which ads they wanted would to talk about, and this one was probably the most people asked for. So it's it, 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 most people have seen it. Like I say, most people, I think, could sing it mm-hmm. back to you. Um, so it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, it worked. People bought the drink. They ran it for donkey's years, slightly updated it as they went through. Um, looking at it in 2023, sitting here now, what do you think? There was a couple of sounds that I heard coming from your direction. Of <laughs> Ooh. So, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, there was... Looking at it now, it's kind of like, like you said, different <coughs> times altogether. Like, you just feel uncomfortable watching it. Well, it doesn't make any sense. There's no purpose to it. If you compare it to the Milky Way advert, the Milky Way advert is simple, clean storytelling um, with, you know, cars as characters. There's no... Like, anyone watching it could see themselves as one of those cars if they wanted to. For whatever reason, they went a very specific route with the characters and style of this advert. Now, the overall animated style is obviously calling back, but even that's kind of weird, because if this was 82, really, that style of animation is, like, 40s, which is, you know, as I said before, when we were um, it's a bit watching mi- kids' mixed. cartoons in the 80s, we were watching either stuff that was produced in the 80s or stuff that was produced in the 60s. So the 40s was already, like really outdated by that point I just, I just think it's weird it, it is effective in that it's memorable because we do remember it and for the same reasons the Milky Way advert was memorable it's animated in a style which obviously massively appeals to kids and it kind of blends in with the programming but just very strange choices from top to bottom as to why you would have those characters and there isn't a story to it so for me it's actually yes it's memorable but it's not inherently a good advert before you even get into why they chose that style of character. Well, it, it did work. Mm-hmm. It did, yeah. It did work. It was memorable. The sold off the back of it. Right, but I mean, by the same token, this was an era when Weetabix was advertised, you know, the, the Weetabix characters were a bunch of skinheads. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. <laughs> It, it was the very definition of different times, inexplicable times. Well, I'm just looking now to see if uh, maybe the characters that were in the commercial were on the packaging, but uh, I can't see any evidence of that. So which one came f- came first, this or Umbongo? I would say this came before Umbongo. So Umbongo copied this, basically. This, uh, Def- it, definitely this. If this was, this 82, was 82. From 82. The, 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 this must have run for a good number of years because I wouldn't have remembered it at 82, obviously. Yeah, it would be late 80s, I'd remember yeah, from yeah, saying yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So should we talk about the, the characters depicted in this uh, commercial one? Well, you can, but I mean, as I say, my question is just why? The bit I winced at was the, uh, the woman that comes on toward the it, end. Initially, when that came on, it was like, it's like, Tom and Jerry, like the yeah, old yeah. Tom and Jerry, yeah. which, um, which has the, the stereotypes the, yeah, same associated problem. with that. Yeah. Um, well, these these crow characters, uh, you know, obviously we haven't got definitive evidence of this, but to me, it seems very influenced by the the crows in Dumbo, mm-hmm. which have you know since obviously become an issue as well um, because of the racial stereotypes. But I I, I, I can't see personally much past that has been the inspiration you know Dumbo was made in the 40s it didn't have characters quite in that style but you know I just think that I think they've drawn from that for whatever reason and, and created this this advert but it it's memorable because for me it's I didn't remember the the, the full kind of script of it because it's not really lyrics there's, there's talking in there all I remembered was the start and just the general tune which mm-hmm. goes back to what I was saying before it's mm-hmm. like that's the effective thing well, that's the thing. I, I was shocked when I watched it back for this pod <coughs> because I'd remembered the same things. Obviously, the way memories work, the, character, uh, the characters themselves on the part I'd remembered. Mm-hmm. It was the lyrics, the general kind of look of it. And yeah, watching it back, I was like, mm, yeah, that's not... I wouldn't have expected that. Um, so when you say they updated it, how, when... The change in the characters. Completely changed the characters. Yeah. 
so there was a picture there where it was like a and the, they've obviously thrown in char- new characters in different styles as well mm. so a bit of a mashup of yeah so they've basically you know this this was this is going back way before now obviously people were flagging it as a problem back then and saying mm. these characters aren't aren't going to fly like not on. That's the thing. I imagine there was plenty of people who were upset about it at the time. It's just harder to uh, make that upset known when there isn't <laughs> social platforms and stuff like that. True. Yeah, true. So should we wrap up with the, uh, the, the clear cast perspective on that one? I'm going to say that they would refuse that. <laughs> I think I think clear cast would send a note that just says, strangle at birth. You know, <laughs> just, just rethink this from the ground up, son. Kill it with fire. <laughs> Get it in the sea. <laughs> I think Clearcast would report us to the air <laughs> if we put this in. Fair enough. I, yeah, I wouldn't disagree with that. So, moving on. <laughs> um, we're going to go on to... Um, Trebo, Soft Mints. Mm-hmm. Um, Mr. Soft. Now, before I play this one, Matthew, do you want to share your kind of personal story about this one mm, no maybe afterwards no that it's not really a story but i think you know once once you see it <laughs> <laughs> well this one's from 1987 mr soft rule vt bom, 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 bom. mr soft won't you tell me why the world in which you're living is so strange Oh, Mr. Soft, how come everything around you is so soft and rearranged? Bite through the shell of a tree bore spearmint soft mint, and everything turns chewy and soft. They're crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Stuff a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's class. I love that one. But again, Why? I think the song's great. The song. The song makes it really. The lyrics or the tune? Both. I like the kind of weird instruments that they've got, but I think the the way the guy sings the tune, because people mimic that as well. So people wouldn't sing it. They would give it the Mr. S- <laughs> <laughs> you know? And again, it's that earworm aspect of it. So yeah. you could, you could, that could have been a radio commercial with just the tune. Yeah, and and people would have remembered mm-hmm. that, um, but yeah, in terms of the the visuals, come on, mm-hmm. it's a soft world. What do you want? I think it's a bit of a, a bit of a lie on the product, though. I know that they explain it's got the the hard outer shell that it's soft, uh, chewy on the inside, but I I never found soft mints to be soft. I thought they were always like really quite chewy, because if you remember, <laughs> around about the same time, there was an advert for a. Um, like an they're not called chewy mints. <laughs> they're called soft mints. Exactly. Well, they are chewy, not soft. But if remember, there was there was a like a, a Rennie type product. I think it was called Rem Gel or something. And it, and it, that was a little. Um, it was almost like a like a foam. You know, like you can get like foam jelly sweets kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And in the advert, they squeezed it. Oh yeah, yeah. And and to me, like that is what I thought a soft mint would be like when I had one. And it even looked like the bloke's head, actually, come to think of it. <laughs> but it. But it wasn't. So I do think there's an inherent lie in there. But, 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 I, but, I, am, but I am biased because, yes, I, I, for whatever reason, I walked into the playground one day at primary school and uh, a, few of the, a few of the bad lads had decided that I walked like Mr. Soft. I didn't, but there we go. So then, you know. Do you want to demo your walk now? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I can confirm it. He definitely doesn't walk like that. I would never, ever walk like that. But it's it's just it's just, just one of those deep childhood scars. You yeah, know, don't yeah. worry about it. It's, yeah. it's fine. Is it's that fine. why we chose it? For, like, just oh, to bring that back yeah, up? Just for, yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks, lads. Yeah. Well, again, was this one, is this, this commercial not in the same, like, arena as the others? I mean, Soft Mint's not as popular as uh, some of the other brands we've looked at, but they're not, they're not bothered about telling you about what no. the what the sweet is they're just again it's more of a kind of brand member memorable it, ad. it is very memorable i you know i don't remember e- even though i've just watched it now i still couldn't tell you all the lyrics but there, i remember like everyone else the bit at the be- what you just did the mr soft bit at the beginning and just the overall style of it because it was so unusual mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah yeah well if even a post box has eaten them got to be good <laughs> um is that your criteria is it 
If I have a post box, he'd say, I'll have a shot, eh? I'll try it. Um, any other analysis on that one before we move on to clear cast stuff? Anything else to say about it? Do you remember it? I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Practical effects and all that. Huh? Yeah, Looks. it was on TV. I think that was on cinema <coughs> as well. I've seen that one in the cinema. But yeah, probably, it just yeah. looked completely different to anything else out at the time, you know, like a bit of puppetry going on in there. Like, oh, actually, no, 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 likes puppetry. He does, he loves a bit of puppetry. Well, do you not see the list of links he sent through to propose for this podcast? Well, and nearly everyone had puppets. It's very puppet heavy. <laughs> it was the, sm the smash one, yeah, yeah. With the robots in. I've said well, we, we don't remember that. We, we <laughs> That's had. why I wanted to bring it to the table. <laughs> well, to be fair, we had... <laughs> I've seen it on clip shows, but I don't remember it actually being on TV. We had a list of about 50 commercials that people suggested, so it was uh, it was, tough. It was, your tough. Way. It was tough to whittle them down, but yeah, if it's, if it's popular. With all the views we'll get on this, we'll make it popular. So remember, if you're watching this, only. give it a like. Yes. Please, because I want to do the... the Smash one. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> Give Mark a thumb up. Yeah. It's, up it's up to you, uh, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> so in terms of uh, Clearcast, I've got the same uh, watershed restriction on, I'd, on this I'd assume, now. I'd assume so, because it's obviously very abstract, but it's clearly, you know, would be appealing to kids. Um, is it a sweet or is yeah, it a mint? No, that's, well, come on. Uh, it, it, that comes down to science. It, <laughs> it, do. it, it does. They, they would literally they would, do Pantene commercials. They, well. they would look. They would look at the uh, ingredients, the, the makeup of the product, and if it, it's above a, th a certain threshold, which I'm sure it would be, mm -hmm. then yeah, it would be HFSS. Yeah. That, that's not a, a judgment call. That's just based purely so, on the ingredients. Tic Tacs. Yeah like a calorie a tic tac or something is that how they've got round being able to show their commercial before the watershed don't know for definite but i'd assume that had something to do with it yeah uh -huh. again less to do with the calories more to do with what's in it. i mean if they're pure sugar are they pure sugar tic tacs i don't know i, I don't run the company i don't know i don't have that information <laughs> to hand when was the last time you saw a tic tac advert on tv while we're talking about it um it's probably long <laughs> long time ago now mm. probably just seems like yesterday <laughs> yeah, to me yeah, yeah. Um, but everything does <laughs> when I can remember it mm -hmm. um, so aside from that everything else good it's just a bit of wacky fun isn't it well yeah they're not making any weird claims in it or anything it's, it's, there's nothing offensive in it it's just purely about it's advertising a product which is you know has been I suppose rightly restricted from being advertised heavily to kids mm -hmm. that, that's the bottom line because, you know, kids eating sweets. Come on. Mm -hmm. This is 2023. Not allowed to do that anymore. Mm. Okay, we'll move on to the next one then. Um, the man from Milk Tray. <laughs> <laughs> More confectionery. Uh, but adult yeah. confectionery. Only because one. that's what the lady loves. The lady loves? Lady yeah. wants? Or because the lady loves. Or because the lady loves. Cadbury's Milk Tray. Don't even need to run the advert. Yeah, so... To be honest, when I watched... This one, ahead of the podcast, this is not the version I would remember. But there must have well, been... There was a whole series of them. Yeah, yeah, there was loads of them. But this is the first one. Um, so this one's from... Uh, 1968? No, can't be. I think so, yeah. 68? Bloody hell. Okay, it's from 1968. Man from Milk Tray. Let's have a look. <laughs> Does the uh, lady still love milk tray in 2023? Well, it's funny because my main memory of this campaign is um, is my mother saying that she doesn't care for milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lies. Oh, yeah. all, all that. Get they're a telly off. Get it All on. that. Yeah. They're not even very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Mind you, dairy box, she hates even more. Yeah. It's like, yeah, Christmas. Uh, it's all, what, what shall we get me, mum? Oh, get the, the milk tray. It's like... A, I still don't like them this yeah. year either, son. Mm -hmm. Like, my stop buying me them. But the advert says... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mother was Terry's all gold. All the way. <laughs> I'm starving after this, you know. 
Um, Terry's all good, man. That was a good. That was a good chocolate. Bar pack it in. <laughs> Stop. Is a Tesco just from the corner? You can go on. Well, 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 should, we, should we finish this first? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can. I am starting um, as well. Yeah. So obviously, James Bond inspired. Um, although, ah, although, as we just said, as it was on, that uh, dive at the beginning, James Bond, Goldeneye. Well, they've nicked that off military, haven't they? So it's come full circle. When he did that dive, he didn't have the briefcase in his hand, did he? No. He dives into the water, no briefcase. Comes out of the water, briefcase. Did he get the briefcase from Reshoot. the shot? <laughs> <laughs> a big logic problem with that <laughs> advert. Yeah. Well, do you want to pull apart the narrative? Because there's quite a big gap between fighting the shark and getting onto the boat. <laughs> yeah, but was that the shortened version? <laughs> well, that was the TV version, yeah. Well, no, I mean, it, you know, it, it is what it is, isn't it? It's a... a you mentioned James Bond. If that one came out in '68, there would have been TV shows like Man from Uncle and Mission Impossible mm-hmm. and other type knockoffs. Like, you so know, like character was just all the rage. Yeah, at that not, not even the character, just that that idea of like this kind of dashing spy, I suppose. So I think it was it made good sense to um, build the campaign around it. Obviously, it ran for a very long time in different versions. Mm-hmm. It is memorable. Whether any of <laughs> whether any of the women in our lives ever liked Milk Tree is irrelevant, really. And it? it's just you do remember it. Um, the, the character uh, uh, again. I know we're not looking at it today, but it's kind of the same as the um, the couple in the coffee adverts, isn't it? It's just uh, they had more personality. Obviously, you, you were arguably invested in them, but um, the milk tray man just like that's just the thing. People will talk about that. We mm-hmm. use that as a phrase, mm-hmm. wouldn't they? Yeah. Is it's that what happens then? Do men just buy boxes of chocolates for women? Do you ever just buy yourself a nice box of chocolates, Matthew? Frequently. <laughs> <laughs> and then I leave it on the table. See, if, that had just been, if that had just been Matthew's hand picking up the chocolates at the end there. <laughs> More realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Yeah. Come back on yeah. if you want. <laughs> I'd just be diving in, retrieving the milk tray from the shark and then just sit and scram them on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> and all because Matthew loves milk tray. Oh, I hate these caramels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always found that one quite disturbing though, that like someone's like, it's like, the reverse of a robber, isn't it? Really, mm-hmm. someone's actually come into my house without me knowing, and uh, <laughs> left, left me a gift somewhere. What it's else like, has he done? <laughs> has he been in your knicker drawer? Exactly. Has he had a shit in your cupboard? <laughs> well, you don't know, do you? <laughs> well, he's left you some chocolate, so surely that's like. <laughs> yeah, but are they laced with arsenic? Yeah. <laughs> How can you trust them? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't eat them, would you? <laughs> step, step into the the paranoid world of my lucky and and think of this through a new lens. We should all get uh, the world business cards. That's what we should get, you know. Just us in silhouette, like the milk tray in silhouette. Um, so that when we leave boxes to chocolates for the various women in our lives, they know who it's I from. mean, you're right. I, t- I take your point. If I walked in the house and someone had left me a box of chocolates, I wouldn't necessarily eat them. I would assume there was something wrong with I'd them. I'd be yeah. checking my locks, <laughs> changing my keys. Well, you'd be checking the uh, expiry date on <laughs> See if they start to tarnish a Two months out of date. <laughs> So, why do you think that worked so well then? At the time? Well, I mean, it was, I, th- I think they ran them into the 90s, didn't they? Pretty much, yeah. Don't have that many research. Oh, uh, 2003. <laughs> really? Yeah. 2003. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when ladies officially stopped loving milk tray. The man in black. Well, I think it was, it's, it's the sexiness of the <coughs> being the spy, isn't it? Obviously, that's carried on. I know it's changed. Mm. Obviously, just looking at James Bond and the way that's changed and will be changing moving forward. So, if they're going to have a Jane Bond, could we see there being a <laughs> a lady I see where milk tray going. advert? You know that leaves a, some chocolates for a handsome dashing man. <laughs> well, why, why, why would a the man, man standing? <laughs> yeah. Question for you, Matthew. Why would a man buy one a box of chocolates? Question what, for me. Yeah. If it was family fortunes, what do you think would be number one on the board? <laughs> if it was family fortunes, the number one answer would be to apologise for something. Apologise. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what would be number two? Just to be nice, just to be romantic. Roma- right, now we're getting somewhere. Romantic, yeah. You're after something, eh? <laughs> I found these milk tray. <laughs> Aye. What have you been up to? <laughs> yeah. You want, you want me to put weight on, do you? Aye, you better jump back in the sea. <laughs> Who's obviously knit these from? <laughs> I feel it would have descended. It, 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 I mean, no, it, it, it is an interesting cast. little point. It is an interesting point Rolls because the, the, the gender stereotyping thing, you know, I, I haven't noticed it 
be an issue in the last couple of years when it, when the new rules came in there was a bit of talk about you know ads that were getting bounced and stuff and I, I don't know I, I, I don't I, would that one get bounced for that I, I don't think so I don't think so if, you'd if, be taught in a clear cast when you had the script ready but again you? it's a very you know it's clearly inspired by films it's a film like kind of um exaggerated and you know it, there's nothing in that that's real life there's mm -hmm. nothing in that that's like you know the, the sort of stuff that has been bounced for the you know because it fell far of the gender stereotype and is is literally it's like well there's a woman pushing a baby in a push chair well that should be a man you know it, it's that kind of stuff it's like just general day to day of like well you can't you can't effectively represent normal behaviors whatever they might be as being specific to a certain gender mm. you know if that's the perception of the advert that's not what that is, you know. That that's a that's a high production, you know, pastiche basically of um, popular film. Isn't it? So, I, I, I think that won't be okay. Well, they they'll be going by the spending habits data, so it's it's men buying it mm -hmm. mostly <coughs> for a woman. So that that that'll be the, what and what that drove will be the evidence. Originally. If Clearcast came back and said, "Oh, gender s stereotypes," they could say, "Well, actually, the buying habits are." men are buying these for women. Oh, it would definitely be something you'd, Yeah, you definitely you'd include it, yeah. So. But, I mean, that rule, is, it's not great, that rule. No. Because, for example, now, when we're shooting a commercial, if some, right, okay, in the commercial, someone has to do the washing up, or we're always going to pick the bloke to do the washing up, because we'd be afraid that if we had a lady doing it, that clerk has to go, whoa, 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 come on. What's this? Do you think women just do the washing up? I say, well, no, but in this commercial, it just is. So it's you know, it's not a there great a, rule. There was a whole. I mean, obviously, there was literally a series with with OXO, but like aside from that, there was a whole kind of uh, genre of advert, particularly in the eighties, uh, of of you know family life, which was all, they were all focused around moms in the kitchen making tea and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, you know, it kind of. She she's looking after the family by feeding them healthy stuff, whatever the product happened to be. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think. Funny enough, the one that comes to mind that is a literally a kind of a reversal of that, which is a really good advert from recent years, is the um, Coleman's one with Bill Fellows in it, where he's um, cooking the casserole for his daughter who's just been through a heartbreak and just coming back home, um, which is a really good advert. But yeah, like all those like Oxo ads and stuff, I, I think they might actually fall foul of the. Um, gender stereotyping rules these days mm -hmm. yeah it's tough out there it's <laughs> tough to get stuff on TV you know so we'll move on to the last one in this pod which is the is Reebok had you seen this one before I think, think I've on literally only just remembered it and if it's the one where is it the belly's going to get you and it's like yeah, the belly be beat the beer belly there's Chasing a belly. people, yeah. yeah, yeah, down the street. Yeah, no, no, it's a different one. It's a different <laughs> belly one. <Okay>. <laughs> <coughs> Too mean. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Mark, I'll stick up for you, mate. I'm not doing these anymore. Ready for the job. Ready for the job. guess at the year that was broadcast it's like because it's not in the sheet down here I'm going to say I know now though 2002 2003 close 5 no. 2005 no 2000 yeah 2000 what? yeah 
Um, so, very strange advert for a kind of sports fitness brand brand <coughs> company, I think. At the time, I can't remember anything close to that. Sports brands, when they did advertise, were very just lifestyle focused and quite bland or boring compared to that. Just always just trying to give the perception of, you know, it being a cool brand rather than trying to tell a story. But that's why that's so memorable and why it works because, you know, you could watch 10 Nike adverts over the course of 15 years of production. They're all blend into one. They've got a great tagline, but, you know, it, it. most people who are watching them, maybe not you, are seeing people in them that they can't really relate to. Mm-hmm. It's like what they're seeing is someone who's, you know, straining every sinew and, you know, running every two minutes and just kind of, you know, at, at a level of fitness that they're trying to tell you, well, you can attain this with our products, whereas that is a lot more, you know, kind of man on the street. Like, we know your pain. We, we, know, we know what your problem is, as you know what your problem is. So what are you going to do about it? You should do it with our shoes. But that's the thing with these sports brands, you know, people buy sportswear not necessarily to go and do exercise it's just mm-hmm. fashion as well mm-hmm. so i think they've always it's it's probably deliberate on their part that they don't be specific about what they're selling you whereas that one had a very specific thing of you buy your gear because you're going to exercise and kind of improve yourself yeah but again it's obviously heavily slanted at a male audience so it's no doubt driven by sales data they had Probably that they were looking to boost their sales to men rather than that, you know, men were kind of the, the core, core market at the time, mm-hmm. would be my guess. Well, yeah, I, I think that's, I, I love that ad. It was like nothing else that was on, that was on at the time. Um, it was a real belly. It was practical effect. <laughs> <laughs> it I know was a, an eight foot wide and five foot tall <laughs> beer gut. <laughs> Made of latex. Funny, I'm, I'm cultivating. I'm, I'm just growing one, <laughs> one of my own at the minute. Not quite as big and I'll, tall, yeah. We'll get you some Reeboks then. <laughs> <laughs> well, would that ad work on you guys? Like, would you see that and think, maybe you're not the audience, Mark. So Mark's an avid runner anyway. Um, I wore Reeboks when I was a kid, but I wouldn't wear them as an adult. So it would. It works in that it reminds me of Reebok. But it wouldn't drive me to go and buy them, no. Well, do you think Reebok, because the kind of, in terms of um, the brand penetration, you, you've got Nike and Adidas up there and Reebok's always kind of, you know, a bit behind. Mm-hmm. Do, do you think that was a kind of throw of the dice on their part? Like, well, let's actually do something different. Well, and specifically, yeah. like, with that, obviously, it's running trainers. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, as you say, it was um, unlike any other advert in that space at the time pro- probably before or since I mean prob- we haven't got the information in front so I haven't <coughs> really interested to see the, the sales after that ad mm-hmm. in comparison to previous um, see if it did peak was a spike um, but yeah Be- I mean it's would you class that as a brand ad because I think that's selling a bit harder than some of the other ones we've looked at oh yeah it's a harder sell definitely it's not selling a specific trainer but yeah because obviously Reebok do all I'm sure he was head to toe in Reebok but it is focused on the shoes isn't it mm-hmm. not a specific one to say buy this particular pair but in general Reebok trainers yeah and I mean you know it's not like at any point you really focus on any gear he's wearing at all mm-hmm. apart from right at the end right at the end it really kind of pushes the well there's the one shoe. there's one shot about 20 sec- about 20 whatever how long was that one? That was a when he jumps over the um, the wall behind the pub, that's the first kind of hero shot of the mm-hmm. shoe, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's interesting that it was it was right at the end where it had beer belly, as opposed to if you just remove the beer kind of thing. That could have been it's just fitness in general and keeping weight off. If you, do you like, do you think he looked too trim to be in the advert? Do you think he had a bit of bit of padding on him? Well, this is the thing that's happening now with. <clears throat> sports apparel is that a lot of the fashion if you like sports fashion they're all calling out for larger size models 
and people that do get into running that maybe are overweight can't get the larger clothes size and it's like well we're new to this we want to get into it we want to lose weight but actually everything that you show us is for like the the trimmer um athlete and that'll that's what it's been like for ages so yes they'll have chosen that person because it looks like an athlete and not like the it's probably more on the average sad really because he, what he's wearing is quite loose and baggy anyway so mm. well in 2023 we're living in a time now where you've got the body positivity movement um where people will argue with you that being overweight isn't necessarily unhealthy so would this commercial cause problems now if it was on air with people like would people complain about it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. based on that that fact i, I think, think it, it would, would definitely yeah. definitely be a point of contention because of what you just said there um whether that would stop it from being produced or, st- or stop it aired I, I don't know and again it, it's another one that's in the the very fantastical realm so you know you, you're kind of you're giving yourself that little bit of buffer there as a, a someone who's producing it to, to argue that look it, it's so out there that of course it's 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 basically <laughs> it's a metaphor it's not it's not real so yeah you have got that protection but yeah i definitely think there'd be people that would be um upset at the general thesis that there's such a thing as being you know overweight but again it's interesting that because it specifically mentions beer belly mm-hmm. yeah. um I, I do think that's another sort of tick in its, in its column if you like that um you, you would argue well look we're, we're aiming this at a very specific audience who have a very specific problem mm-hmm. and you know that's what we're saying so I, I do think it would be an interesting case I wouldn't assume that they would bounce it no pun intended mm. I'd be ready at the edit suite to make some changes <laughs> uh, yeah how are you going to how are you going to cut the belly out <clears throat> not the belly I think it would I think it, m- it might actually just be what was written on the train at the end they might say you know <laughs> Soften it by saying uh, lose weight or something or <laughs> lose the belly. Mm. I don't know. I, I just you, there's been some strange feedback from Clearcast over the years of things that they say. Well, if you say it like that, it's different to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And when you compare them side by side, like I I don't think there's a difference there. Well, again, I think if it just said lose the belly, that you'd be in more danger of it not getting passed because they've made it very specific to beer belly. I mean, you know, I, I just think that, that gives them that little bit of um, mm. cover, basically. I mean, mm. I could be wrong, but haven't the, isn't like the term fat, is that like a, they've replaced that by a softer word called huge. <laughs> you can't say fat. It's like, I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather be called fat than huge. Huge? Yeah. Who's, who's saying huge I've, instead of maybe fat? Maybe it's, it's I've been around the schoolyard too often. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you mean large? Is, lo- is it large? Maybe? Enormous? Is it enormous? In, uh, it could be enormous. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 no, it, no. It, I think the word you're looking for is heavy. Heavy. Would you be called fat or heavy? The Americans like to use the term heavy for he- someone who's yeah, fat. Yeah, but isn't that always been like the you know heavy but I'm heavy boned, aren't I? I'm heavy boned. Is that is that where it comes from? You know. Well, I mean, my uh, mother would say he's always been he's always been a bit chunky. Chunky, chunky, yeah. <laughs> well, that rhymes with my last name, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's Mark, bringing back, it's Mark bringing back Chunky. Mark Chunky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have to, Mark Chunky, Funky, Spunky, Monkey, Runky was my nickname at school. Now it's brought back memories. Were you one of the Goonies? <laughs> <laughs> that was all of them. It <laughs> was a group of. Um, there you can cut that. Well, no, I don't think huge or enormous <laughs> would soften <laughs> fat for me personally. Um, I don't know about anyone else. <laughs> but it's, uh, I think it's just interesting that, so from the year 2000 to now, um, the simple notion that like um, doing exercise and trying to get <coughs> yourself fitter would potentially cause problems, saying that now. And what we're saying earlier about Clearcast really are looking to make sure that whatever, whatever commercial you put on air doesn't get a load of complaints. And, and get banned <coughs> later down the line. Mm-hmm. So that as it is, I would say that would get a lot of complaints. And the SA probably would ban it just because they, they tend to, don't they? 
I don't know. I, I still think it may get passed, but I do think that if you wanted to cover yourself even more, you would put four or five other characters in there of different ages, weights, sex. So you'd have a group of people running and the belly was chasing all mm-hmm, of them. Mm-hmm, I think if you did mm-hmm. that, different different advert. You know what was the straight way? Then you just... It's just not as narratively sound. Well... It's a hot pursuit. <laughs> the belly's on a bike at the end, man. Come on, get it on telly. That's fine. I, I agree. I'm just saying I think if you were going to, you know, be more careful about it, that's how you would write it now. Well, so it's softened. Mm-hmm. Much like the belly itself. Nice so and soft. TV ads better in the old days, then. <laughs> um, defined better. You know, there were arguably in general funnier and as I say I think you know there was a lot more reliance on, on older techniques like catchy music making music popular or you know creating music for them which was catchy obviously on a technical level things have continued to, to improve massively mm-hmm. but I, I, I personally feel like advertising is fairly bland now and it definitely felt like it was a, there was there was more um I don't want to say there's more creativity in it because that's not true. But like I just think, like we said before, it was it was it was a bigger deal. It was it was part of the culture in a way which it isn't really anymore. Yeah. I mean in fact, now it's well. Let's be honest. Uh, adverts are things to be skipped now, not watched. You know, part of that, I think there's just so many of them. You know, yeah. so many ad breaks are longer. There's so many different adverts you served all the time. I think there's fatigue in there. But when you were, as you said before, when you had four channels to watch, and you know. You're pretty, you, you, yes, there were video recorders, but more often than not, if you're wanting to watch them, you're sitting watching it live. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you were seeing the adverts. Yeah. Just, a, just a different different context to see them in. You know, the, the, arguably they had to work harder to um, get your attention, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything you say. Well, lads, it's down to us to change that, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I was just, when you was going through like that, that last one at the end there, the Reebok one, it's like, if you had that storyboard, the original storyboard in front of you, and then we did a new storyboard for any of, well, for any of those that we've reviewed, like, what changes would we implement? I think that'd be quite interesting to have, like, a, you know, from a 1980s point of view storyboard to kind of 40 years on, mm. this is what we, this is what you'd have to do to get that out there from a mm. script and visual, how would we change that? Could we keep some of the practical There'd stuff? There'd be, be a lot of red pen on it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a Kiora one for, for sure. Mm-hmm. Th- things change, things evolve, things move on, and, you know, arguably overall g- generally improve. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, it, it's just difficult to say because, as I say, I'm not exposed to ads in the way that I was back then, so they're just it's harder for them to be memorable. But I do feel like there's just a lot more, like, gimmicky adverts now mm-hmm. gotta do what you gotta do sometimes like you say just to get noticed there's a lot of noise now a lot more noise now than there was back then mm-hmm. especially bloody 68 mil tray man <laughs> had everyone's attention there was only three three channels then not even four Oof. okay so we'll wrap this pod up there then um, thank you for watching or listening although Probably not a great audio one, this one, <laughs> this, is it? This is, this I is think there's about one, five yeah. adverts on there that have got no, like, are views, these, just music. Are these going to be the, the first pods that will do that on audio? They're going to have to be on there. It's pretty pointless. I oh, will still put the audio version out. <laughs> yeah, who cares, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, please like the video. Subscribe, if you would. Would really appreciate that. Won't you laugh for that? <laughs> just you know, like if if you would be so kind, just to <laughs> possibly subscribe to our channel. Well, yeah, I'm talking more like yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. it's back in the eighties and stuff, a bit more formal <laughs> formality. Um, do you want to do your outro as well? Because I feel like we always miss that, like. <sighs> <laughs> and I love the fact you hate doing it. So, if you'd be so kind to that camera right there, <clears throat> get a run. Now up. remember to smash that like button. And that subscribe button. Pretty please. Make Kevin's life. He will. Thank you for watching. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. See you later. Thanks. Thanks.